Hello guys and welcome to the first video of 2020. Today we're going to be taking a look at a laptop that I was sent all the way from Canada. Big thanks to Alexander for sending this over. I think it's time we should open up the box and see if it survived its long journey. Apparently this costs 73 Canadian dollars to get it posted here. If you'd actually like to send me anything, the parcel post address is in the description below. Thankfully the charger was also sent in the package. And here we have the laptop itself in a layer of bubble wrap. International shipping can be pretty rough on packages, so I'm really hoping there isn't any damage. It appears to be an old Acer Aspire. Much to my surprise, the laptop is very clean and in really good condition. I'm very curious to see whether it survived shipping. Alexander said that it had an SSD installed with Windows Vista. However, it didn't seem to detect any operating system. To begin problem solving, I looked inside to see what happened to the SSD. During shipping, it must have become dislodged from the SATA port, since it wasn't in a drive caddy. It's a 60GB Drevo SSD, which is a brand I've never heard of before. For now, I'll just slot the drive back in, and see if it still works. The Acer Aspire successfully loaded into Windows Vista Home Basic. It also has the maximum of 2GB of RAM and a 1.6GHz single core processor. From the limited information I could find about this laptop online, it appears as it would have cost around 600 Australian dollars back in 2007. A YouTuber I've been watching for many years reached out to me, wanting to tell me about his experience with the Acer Aspire 3680. So, let's take a look. So guys, um, today we're going to be talking to someone else that also owned an Acer Aspire. You've probably heard of him before, with nearly 4 million subscribers. This is Austin Evans. How's it going, man? <laughs> Hello, man. The Aspire 3680 is literally what I built my channel on. That wow. was the laptop I used to create the channel and to create probably the first 50 videos. Wow, that's the exact model I have. I was worried it was going to be a slightly different one. I actually think you have a slightly better one. So you, yours has a webcam, right? Yeah, it's cool. It's one of those Orbi cams. It's a, like a 480p. Um, it doesn't look amazing. Probably about the same quality as this iPad though. So. <laughs> Yeah. I was not cool enough to have the webcam version. Um, I'm curious, what spec is yours? Mine's the 1.6 gigahertz um, Celeron. So it's one core, one thread. I tried running Minecraft. Didn't work that good. <laughs> so uh, is yours running uh, Vista? Yeah, I've got Vista Home Basic, which um, I actually don't and... mind. I don't think it's that bad. And it, it just could be worse. Could be Windows 8. How much RAM do you have? Well. Here's the thing, originally this one was supposed to come with one gigabyte, but uh, the person who sent it from Canada of all places, sent this laptop, uh, installed two gigabytes, and I tried to put in four, however it turns out you can't put any more than two. So that kind of, yes. not the best. <laughs> so I found the exact same thing. So my first model actually shipped with 512 megs of RAM, which was <laughs> the bare basic for, for Vista Basic. And so at the time I was coming from a really slow old Windows XP computer, so the laptop felt fine. Wow. But what I didn't realize was that because it had so little RAM, it legitimately was like a four minute boot. <laughs> like it was what? brutal. So I remember before when I actually started the channel, really quickly I was like, okay, cool, I'm gonna put some more RAM in it. I upgraded to 1.5 gigs and I was like, suddenly everything was like four times faster. Wow. I was like, well, I noticed the system, at least the one I've got, idling at about 70% RAM with two gigabytes yeah. installed. So how did you live, how could this have worked with one or half a gigabyte? I, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't know any better. I didn't have a faster computer. So I just assumed that that's how fast a computer was. Wow. In fact, the computer was so slow that a lot of my earlier videos, I actually didn't edit. I literally took the, like I hit record <laughs> on the camera, recorded five minutes straight, hit stop, put the SD card in the camera, uh, in the computer, <laughs> and just let it upload overnight. So when I first got the 3680, that was the very first laptop that I had actually ever properly used because wow. before then we only had a desktop. And the cool thing about the, the laptop was, was that when I was first starting the channel, it actually was, as slow as it was, enough to create my videos. Wow. So even That's though I didn't cool. edit all of them, some of them I actually did straight up edit. I was able to export to like 480p. 
I was able to do pretty much everything. I ran the channel. I even used to do like screencasts on the laptop, and I would like oh, record cool. like right as like Windows Seven was coming out. I mean, that laptop straight up like without it, I would not have ever created the channel. Like no way. I want to make a big thank you to Austin Evans for taking the time out of his day to chat with me. And actually, he's got a video of his own on this very laptop, so definitely go check that out. I've spent some time installing programs and getting the correct drivers. So let's see just what this budget laptop from 2007 can do. I like that Windows Vista shares pretty much the same startup sound as Windows 7. While the processor inside is very weak by today's standards, it handles old games quite well. Age of Empires 2 was definitely playable. Monster Truck Madness 2 ran very fluidly. However, some of the terrain didn't load properly. A more graphically intensive game, Grand Theft Auto 3, ran decently at the native resolution of 1280 by 800. Modern versions of Minecraft simply wouldn't run. However, an early alpha version was definitely playable with the view distance turned way down. The sound didn't actually work though. Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Something that did work however was YouTube playback. Sadly it was quite choppy even at 480p. And by cheapest I mean... The very limiting Intel GMA 945 graphics adapter is likely the reason why even old games such as Star Wars Battlefront 2 struggled. At the absolute lowest settings, it's still barely playable. One feature I do remember about Windows Vista is the bubble screensaver. While it looks cool, I get the feeling that the CPU is struggling. One thing it didn't struggle with is drawing in Microsoft Paint. One really cool design feature is the rotatable webcam, with image quality similar to a potato. Since I've never actually taken apart a laptop like this, I think it's time we try and disassemble it and apply some new thermal paste. I began by removing the battery, which still holds a charge of well over an hour. Upgrading and removing the RAM is quite easy. You've also got access to the Wi-Fi and modem cards. I must say that the heatsink looks pretty flimsy. More than 20 screws hold the casing together. For such a cheap laptop, it definitely isn't going to be falling apart. That means removing the CPU heatsink requires an extensive disassembly. Two Phillips head screws hold the keyboard in place with a single ribbon cable connecting it to the motherboard. Removal of the display was also required. Four small screws hold the hinge in place. The top casing can now be detached from the laptop. And finally, the motherboard can be lifted out of the frame. A single copper heat pipe is used to dissipate heat away from the CPU. Even though it's only a single core 1.6 GHz CPU, it has a comparatively higher TDP of 30 watts. Using methylated spirits, I remove the old crusty thermal paste. I feel like the heatsink might be part of the reason this CPU stays pretty hot, even after idling for a while. The new thermal paste I'm applying is Arctic MX4, which has great thermal conductivity. I also dusted out any debris that had built up in the fan assembly. Surprisingly, there wasn't actually that much. The reassembly could now be done. With the optical drive in place, I clipped the top casing back on. The mountain of various Phillips head screws could now be screwed back in. I used some Loctite on the screws that hold the screen assembly in place. This will reduce the chance of the screws coming loose. To make the keyboard and trackpad a lot more hygienic, I cleaned off the surfaces with some eucalyptus oil, which is great for killing germs and making the laptop smell really nice. With it all back together, it thankfully still works. The keyboard is also fairly decent to type on. 
for such an affordable budget laptop, the Acer Aspire 3680 is quite compact, and the specific model I have here is also quite feature rich, if slightly underpowered. I'd like to give Alexander a big thank you for sending this over. His social medias are linked in the description below. And a big thank you to Austin Evans for reaching out to me and having a nice long chat about this laptop. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and we've got plenty more planned for 2020. If you've liked this video, feel free to leave a like. And if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.